there's always going to be someone who will tell you, you shouldn't do it. You can't do it. But that's not the way God operates. So we're going to talk about, first of all, the contrary people that David had to face. Because he had to face some of them in order to defeat Goliath. The first one is Jesse. Jesse is his dad. You know, sometimes when you've got to deal with some stuff, you've got to deal with your family first, don't you? You know, and you, you would think they would always support you and be with you, but that's not always the case, is it? Sometimes they're just not. And we have this story here, you know, the prophet has come to uh, Jesse's house and he's asked him to bring out all the boys because God's going to anoint the next king and he brings them out there and Samuel goes down the line and says, nope, 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 nope. And then he turns and he says, is this it? Is this all the sons you've got? And, you know, Jesse says, well, they're still the runt of the litter. You know, he's the youngest. He's out in the fields. He's watching the sheep and the, the goats. Sin for him. At once, Samuel said, we will not set down to eat until he arrives. Wow. Think about that. The prophet has given word. Jesse, bring out all your boys. We're going to anoint the king. One of them is going to be the next king. And you don't even get in the lineup. You're not even considered, well, maybe these, not them. And sometimes you're going to have to deal with the people in your life who are going to come against you. and not, They love you. They care for you. They, they have your best interest at heart, but they just don't think you're qualified. They just don't think you can do it. And that was the case here with Jesse and the family. Secondly, Eliab. He had to deal with his brothers. His brothers. Now, if you will remember when this story happened with the Goliath, Jesse has sent David. He's now going to be the servant boy. Take your brothers some cheese crackers. Take them some stuff to eat. They're there fighting the battle. Why don't you go fight them? The Goliath shows up. Everybody's wondering what's going on. And here's the story. David asked, he said, uh, what will a man get for killing this Philistine and ending his defiance of Israel? And who is this pagan Philistine anyway that he's allowed to defy the armies of the living God? And these men gave David the same reply. They said, you know what? Yes, that's the reward. That's what you're going to get for killing him. But when David's oldest brother Eliab heard David talking to the men, he was angry. Now, I want you to notice the conversation because it gives you a lot of insight to what's going on. What are you doing around here anyway? What about those few sheep you're supposed to be taking care of? And, you know, I know your pride and deceit. Wow, that's a pretty heavy indictment. You just want to see the battle. Who doesn't want to see a good fight? I mean, you know, you, you just want to see the battle. Notice David's reply. What have I done now? Evidently, this is not the first time, is it? What have I done this time? I was only asking a question. You only ask a question and somebody jumps all over you? I, I was just asking a question. He walks over to some of the others and asks them the same thing and got the same answer. Now, think about this. Eliab was the eldest. He's the first one in line. Everyone believed when that lineup happened with the seven boys that were there, everyone would just assume it's the oldest. Even the prophet thought, surely this is the guy. This is the one. And he had been passed over. Can you say bitter table for one? Okay, I'm not the guy. I, I don't get to be a part of this. What's going on? And he's the one that re rejected. In fact, Samuel probably had the horn out ready to pour the oil. God says, stop. So his own brother, his own brother's against him because of they've been rejected, been passed over, and now suddenly, you ever been a time when you want to do something right and those closest to you don't? And you have to go ahead anyway in spite of everything that has happened. Then we come to this guy named Saul. He's the expert. He's the king. David gets taken to Saul because of his inquiries that he's making. And uh, 
So we have here, and David's questions was reported to King Saul. So the king sent for him and said, what's going on? And David says, look, you, know, you don't need to worry about this Philistine. I'll go fight him. Notice Saul's response. Don't be ridiculous. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. Wow. <laughs> There's no way. You're only a boy. He's been a man of war since his youth. You can't do it. You're too young. You're going against that. What are you thinking? There's no way this can happen. So Saul wasn't very encouraging with him, was he? Unfortunately, there's Goliath, the champion, the champion. You see, your giants speak to you, don't they? And they tell you, you hear them in your head, you're not going to be able to overcome this. You're going to get taken down. This isn't going to work. And notice what he says here. Goliath walked out toward David, his shield bearer ahead of him, sneering in contempt at the ruddy faced boy. Am I a dog, he roared at David, that you come at me with a stick? And he cursed David by the name of his gods. Come over here and I'll give you flesh to the birds and wild animals, Goliath yelled. Wow, that's not very encouraging. Of course, what do you expect from a giant? That's what he's going to do. And see, all of us have these things going on around us of people saying things. Add that to what's also going on in the circumstances that you're facing, what's also going on in your mind to begin with. And there's always someone around that will be able to tell you, you can't kill the giant. You've messed it up too bad. You've gone too far. And it never fails that if you have something you believe God wants you to do, there will be someone telling you you can't do it. Now let me just kind of whisper a little something to you. And don't be surprised because the chances are that will be someone really close to you. It'll be someone part of the family, part of the family of God. And you're just going to have to understand that's part of it. They're good people. They care about you. They have your best interest at heart. They're trying to help you out. The only thing is they're getting in the way of what you know God wants you to do and what you need to do. And let me just give this little word of advice here. If you're not a person who goes after giants, would you stay out of the way of those who do? Okay? If you don't want to fight, that's fine. Just don't get in front of those who do. And so the battle has to be fought over and over and over again. The battle in the mind, the battle that we have to go against. And you're not always expecting that. You're not, and you want somebody to encourage you. You want somebody to tell you, you can do it. That a boy, go after it. Instead of those say, yeah, why bother? Now you're probably just going to have to live with it. Now you're probably going to make it. So there's always going to be contrary people in life, isn't there? We've all found that out already, haven't we? So how do I go beyond that? How do I persist despite the contrary people? How do I keep moving in spite of the negative that I hear, in spite of the discouragement that I get a hold? How do I go on? What do I do? Well, number one, remember they're not God. They're not God. They're good people. They care about you. Most of the people, David's dad loved him. He cared about him. His brothers, well, you know, no one likes their younger brother. I mean, that's just part of life, right, isn't it? It's just the way it goes, and, and then all this happens and goes on. They're just there. They care about And And here's the other thing. Everyone thinks they see clearly. Have you ever noticed that you always think you're right and that other people are crazy? Yeah, if they would just listen to me, right, I could have saved them a lot of problems. If they just listened to me, they wouldn't have been in this mess. That's us, isn't it? Nobody wants to be honest here today, I can see that. 
They're not God. I have to listen to God. And many times when I'm going to listen to God, I'm going to have to hear people who are good people, who care about me, tell me to do something different. Psalm 18, 118, verse 6, the Lord is for me, so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? If God is for me, who can be against me? I don't have to get mad at these people. I don't have to get upset with these people. I don't have to call them the enemy. I just have to understand these people, Saul cared about David. David, you're going to go? You know, I'm going to stake my whole kingdom on you? He cared. His dad cared. Now, Goliath didn't care, but, you know, there's always going to be that mix of people, isn't there? And I have to understand that I am in this conflict to please God, not to please people. And I have to do what God tells me to do. Proverbs 29. Fearing people is a dangerous trap. But trusting the Lord means safety. So it begins with me understanding I have to listen to God. And I have to be obedient to him. Now, having said that, I know that I have to say this, that you and I need to recognize the difference between wise advice and pessimism, between wise advice and criticism. There is a difference. Because remember what I said earlier? Remember they're not God? Well, also remember this, neither are you. And so you have to come to that place where you have to understand, not every time when somebody comes against me Are they just trying to stop me from doing what God wants me to do? Sometimes they're against me, and it would be wise for me to listen to them. And sometimes we get in trouble because we think, well, hold it, God told me. And it really wasn't God. It's just you being stubborn. It's just you trying to get what you want. So you have to come to that place where you're open and honest and willing to understand that as I do this, that go after this giant, as I deal with the issues in life, I'm going to have people who are going to come against me. And, you know, I've got to learn to listen to God. But I'm also going to have people who are going to give me some advice. Some of that I just should ignore, but some of that I need to listen to. Well, Pastor, how do you do that? Well, it begins with that heart we talked about last week, doesn't it? And so we have to understand that because Proverbs chapter 20, verse 18 tells us this. Plans succeed through good counsel. Don't go to war without wise advice. So I've listed just a couple of things. There are some other things there that you need to consider and ask yourself. Okay, when this person's coming against me, I need to ask myself this question. First one is this. Are they scripturally and spiritually right? In other words, is this a godly person? Is this a person that I have trusted and watched and I know they they hear from God, they know God, and is what they're telling me right according to Scripture? What does God's Word say? Because if you're getting ready to do something and you think it's God but it's against God's Word, you're wrong. If you're convinced, well, that's my giant out there, then you're just wrong. You see, well, you know, this is what God, no, it isn't. This is what you want to do. And so I've got to be careful about this. There's another story in uh, the Old Testament in this area where David's the king at this time. And um, he wants to number the people. And the commander of his army, Joab, who has been faithful to him throughout the whole process, looks at David and says, David, don't do it. David, this is wrong. And David persisted, and he paid a huge price for it because it was wrong, and God was upset with him. So David didn't always listen as he should have. And that got him into trouble at times. But many times he did listen, and he listened to God and did what he wanted to do. So when you go through this process of dealing with this, you've got to understand, there are some wise people who might not tell you what you want to hear, 
but it's what you need to hear. And you need to listen to that. And you can't just blow them off because, well, God told me. I don't know. I'm doing this for God. I'm fighting my giant. Don't get in my way. Don't be, uh, don't be contrary to me. Because we're good at that, aren't we? Yes, we are. Yeah, yeah. Secondly, are they my authority? Now, if there's one thing, if you read this story, if you watch it, if you pay attention to the verbiage of it, David didn't go out to fight Goliath until Saul gave him permission. He didn't just know, know, Saul's the king. Saul's in authority. And finally, after this conversation with David, we read a little of it just a moment ago, finally Saul says, David, okay, go. And that's when David went. So you have to understand, you know, you're a teenager and your parent, living parents' home and your parents say, no, don't do this, don't do this, don't do that. Well, God told me. Well, if your authority is telling you no, then the answer is no. If you're at work and you're convinced, you know, God told me to do this, but you have a boss who is telling you something different, the answer is no. Because God has the ability to change the authorities' hearts and minds, doesn't he? And I need to be able to listen to that because that would be wise for me. And sometimes God's telling me to do some things and I'm going to do them. But right now there's one in, in, that stands in the way, the authority saying no. But you know what? I can wait. I can still keep being faithful. I can still proceed as much as I can knowing that God will take care of things if it's him. Because if it's God wanting you to do something... There is no one that will be able to stand in your way because God will take care of that. And so you and I have to understand if they're my authority in life, there's someone I am responsible to listen to, I need to listen to them. Because if I don't, I'm going to get in a lot of trouble. Are they willing to go into battle with me? You see, when you read David's story, no one wanted to, his brother didn't say, David, you go, I'll, I'm right behind you, I got your back. No, it was, David, you go, I'll be back here. Call me if you need help, even though I'll be, I'll be far away, I probably won't hear you, but call. You know, I ha, and I have to understand, you know what, if it's someone who's going to fight with me, if it's someone who's going to help me, if there's someone who's going to be with me in this, then I can listen to them, can't I? Because I know they're going to be involved in the going through the difficulties that I know I've got to go through in order to get through this giant in life. And so if they're willing to fight with me and go into battle with me, that's a true friend. That's someone you want on your side in the midst of the conflict, isn't it? And just let me tell you, you're always much better off going into battle with somebody with you than going in alone. And if you're going in alone, you better really be sure. And here's a bottom line question. Again, it relates to last week. Is this for my benefit or for God's? Why did David go fight the giant? How dare you talk about my God like that? How dare you come against God's people, Israel, like that? Who is this giant that he's allowed to talk about God like that? You see, I want to do this for God's glory, not for my glory. I want to do this for God, not just so I'll have a little bit more or I'll have a little less pressure. I want this to be a God thing, not a me thing. That becomes motives, doesn't it? That becomes a heart issue, doesn't it? That's why that heart is such a big deal when we talked about it last week, that I have to come to that place. So I have to understand that there's a difference sometimes between somebody being contrary to me, somebody being a critic to me, and someone who really cares about me, who has some wise advice to give me that I need to listen to. And that's where you need to know God's Word. That's where you need to have learned how to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit in your life, because He'll tell you things. He'll help you know things, and you need to listen to that. And any time you're going against what you hear down inside from God, you're about to make a big mistake. So i got to come to that place where I recognize the difference between that. 
Thirdly, I need to refuse to get distracted. Refuse to get distracted. Now, your biggest distraction is going to come from inside of you. Every op- opportunity comes with opposition. That's just the nature of doing stuff. But don't allow your emotions to get carried away. Don't make this an emotional decision. Yes, your emotions are involved, but your mo- emotions are not pulling the train. They're the caboose. They're going to come alongside. And so I can't get distracted by all the things that I feel, all the emotions that I go through. Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart above all else. It determines the course of your life. Avoid all perverse talk. Stay away from corrupt speech. Look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. You don't have to spend all your time defending things and saying what you believe and everything else. Just stay on course. Keep doing what is the right thing to do. You see, sometimes we get so distracted with stuff, we start going after the giant, and we forget that we're called to live for God day by day. And we get so consumed with just going after this thing and dealing, I'm dealing with this, I'm dealing with this. Well, you know what? Life is still happening, isn't it? Yes. And I have to stay on course and on track because it's easy to get sidetracked. It's easy to go off, well, I'm going after this giant rabbit. I'm going after this giant squirrel. You know, okay. Uh, I'm going here. Here's what's going on. And I need to keep my mind and my heart focused on God knowing that I am called to be faithful. David was just doing what he was told to do by his father, and as he was obedient there, then the opportunity arose. And so I can't get carried away with, well, I'm just fighting my bird. Oh, poor me. Oh, I've got this such a heavy burden to bear. Oh, the giant I'm facing is colossal. Oh, he's so big. He's so great. He's so gigantic. Oh, oh, oh. Get a grip. Stay on course. Keep serving God, keep being faithful, keep doing what God calls you to do. We'll talk a little bit about this next week. But come to that place where you keep your heart fixed on God, where you keep being obedient to God and what he's called you to do and what he wants to do in your life. Then resist the urge to attack back. If someone is contrary to you, you don't have to be defensive and you don't have to go get them. (laughs) Proverbs 11, 12, it is foolish to belittle one's neighbor. A sensible person keeps quiet. Now you can go and play the gossip line where Hey, I'm going after this and I'm doing this. You know I'm really trying to do it. Do you know what so-and-so said to me? Do you know how they tried to stop me? Do you know that? Or they come to you and say, I don't think you should do it. Well, who do you think you are? You don't have any right to tell me what to do, and I don't think you're such a great Christian anyway. I'm not going to listen to you, blah, blah, blah. We've done that, haven't we? You know, you, you don't take me. Why? Don't go down to their level. You can wrestle with a pig, but only one of you is going to enjoy it. (laughs) Okay? You can get dirty, but it's not going to help you at all. You're going to have to come to that place where you understand. When David's brother attacked him, well, who are you? What do you, David, what do I do? What do you do next? He just turned his attention to someone else and went on. Right? He didn't spend time, hey, you're my brother, you've always done this to me, who do you think you are, I'm tired of you bullying me. No. Okay, let me go on. 
Let's just go through. Don't attack back. You see, you don't have to defend yourself. God will defend you and take care of you. God will help you. And if you've got to feel like, well, I've got to defend myself of what I'm doing, what I'm trying to do, that's insecurity. And the more you try to defend yourself of what you're trying to do, it just seems like it's just you doing it, and where's God in all of this? And so, Jesus, the great example of this. Notice what Peter says about him in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 23. Speaking of Jesus, he did not retaliate when he was insulted, nor threaten revenge when he suffered. He left his case in the hands of God, who always judges fairly. You are most like Jesus when you're silent, when you're attacked. That's confidence. That's assurance. That's letting God take care of him. Jesus, hanging on a cross, had every right to condemn everybody who was involved in the process, didn't he? But all he did was suffer silently through the whole process, right? Why? He was put his hands, put his case in the hands of God. And after he died, he silenced all of his critics because he rose again. He conquered the giant of death. And so you and I don't have to attack back. If it's God, God's going to take care of things. God will fight with you. God will fight for you. And you don't need to ha answer all your critics. And you don't need to get into arguments with people about things. Just keep being faithful. Don't get distracted. Keep going in the direction you know you need to go in and keep being faithful in it. And God will take care of things, won't he? Yes, he will. That also means I need to remain focused on God and his promises. I need to remain focused on God and his promises. There's two things that you see of David. We talked a little bit about it before, of David and what he does. Number one, he's looking at Goliath saying, who's this guy coming against God? He stayed focused on God and God's honor and God's name. He also kept in focus the reward. What's going to happen when I do this? What's going to take place when this all comes down? And he stayed focused on God and his promises. There was another time in David's life when he had been to war. They had been victorious. They came back to camp, but all the camp had been looted. All the women and children and slaves were gone. And David's now in 1 Samuel 30 in great danger because all of his men were very bitter about losing their sons and daughters. And they began to talk of stoning him. That's pretty serious. What does David do? David found strength in the Lord his God. He didn't attack back. He just, God, I need you now. I need you to help me. Because you know what? Before you kill the giant, sometimes it's going to look like things are getting worse and you're going to be defeated. Sometimes it's going to look bad. You have to keep going because God wants to make sure he gets all the credit and you don't. And when David came to this place, he just, okay, I understand. You find strength in the Lord. Lord, I know you love me. I know you have a plan for my life. I know you're with me. I will trust you. What do you want me to do next? And David found strength. And then he comes up with a plan. You don't focus on the problem. You don't focus on people. You don't focus on the contrary people. You stay focused on God and his promises. God, you're faithful with me. God, you're going to help me. God, you promised me. Psalm 18, verse 29. In your strength, I can crush an army. With God, 
I can scale any wall. God's way is perfect. All the Lord's promises prove true. He is a shield to all of those who look to him for protection. God, it's you. You'll help me. You'll take care of me. I can keep going. I'm not going to get discouraged. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to run away. I will keep going no matter what people say, no matter what goes on, no matter what the circumstances look like. God, you're still faithful. I know you're in this, and I know you're going to help me, and I trust you. Not what I see. My faith becomes my sight. Writer in Hebrews puts it this way. Do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will and then you will receive all that he has promised. God will be faithful, won't he? And so I just keep going on. God puts me in this direction. I need to deal with this issue in my life. I need to confront this problem that I'm having to address. I need to go after this thing that is standing in my way that I know God wants me to deal with, and I've got to deal with it. And I'm going to do that, and I'm not going to be able to listen to all the people who want to tell me how or what I should and shouldn't do. I'm not going to just throw myself open to that. I know what God has said. I'm going to be faithful to it. I'm going to be wise. I'm going to listen to people that I know are spiritual. I'm going to listen to them and, and understand that they might have some good counsel for me in order to help me and to lead me and to direct my path. And I'm not going to get distracted from this. I'm not going to give up on this and say, God, I'm going to go after this now. I'll come. Back. We'll just let that go. We'll just come back to it maybe another day, another time. No, no, no. I'm going to stay on course. I'm not going to fight back. I'm just going to keep trusting God. And God will be faithful. Now, your bat battle may take longer than you want it to take. It may be harder than you dreamed it would be. But nothing's too hard for God. So whatever it is you in your life today find that you're dealing with and struggling with, and maybe you've worked at it time and again and tried to fix it here, and it just seems to keep coming back, and you can't get over the hump, so to speak, don't quit. Don't give up. Don't listen to all the voices, the ones outside and inside that are telling you you can't do it. It's not going to work. You've tried it before. You're not able. You're not qualified. You don't have enough. No. God, you know what I need in my life, and I believe you're here to help me, and I will trust in you. So, in your life today, what is it? What is it that you need help with? It might be that where you need to begin is a walk with God that you don't have right now. That you give your life to Christ because you know that's where you need to start. And even though maybe you've got some friends around you who are telling you, don't do that. That's crazy. Christianity is only for losers, it won't work. No, don't listen to those voices. Don't do that. Maybe it's a health issue. Doctors are saying one thing, and they may be telling you the truth. But God's still in control. God still has. Maybe it's finances, and they don't look good. Okay, start a plan to put in place, and with God's help, trusting Him, He can help you. Maybe it's a relationship. God can help. God has a way. Don't give up. Don't quit. So would you take a moment, and whatever you're sensing inside of you right now, would you just, between you and God, would you just ask him to help you with it? Would you just give it to him, so to speak, sometimes? Would you just say, God, I need your wisdom. I need your counsel. God, I need someone to help me. God, I need some direction. Would you, just on your own,
Lord, this morning, here's what we understand. That if we're going to do anything for you, there's always going to be an opposition. Sometimes it's people. Sometimes it's the circumstances. That's what giants do. They throw in our path something that just seems insurmountable. But God, if you're for us, nothing can be against us. You're going to take care of us. So Lord, would you help us to keep trusting you, to keep our eyes and heart fixed on you, to always remind ourselves of your promises because you're faithful in everything you want to do in our lives. And so Lord, we thank you today that whenever we go into battle, we never go alone. When David went after Goliath, all he had was a few rocks, but that was enough. And so, Lord, we thank you today for your presence in our life. And we will choose to keep our eyes fixed on you and to trust you. You're faithful. Help us to be faithful as well, I pray. In Jesus' name.